About 25 years ago, Lincoln created a new segment of large American luxury SUVs when it borrowed the Ford Expedition, added more chrome, leather, and real wood, and created the Lincoln Navigator. Now, the Navigator was such a huge success that it forced its crosstown rival Cadillac to rush and escalate to production just a year later. Now, sadly for Lincoln, the Escalade stole a lot of the Navigator's thunder because that model became the best-selling vehicle in the segment. But thankfully, about four years ago, Lincoln gave the Navigator the full redesign that it needed in order to create a world-class luxury car. Now, of course, with renewed competition from its competitors, I'm actually out here in Payson, Arizona with Lincoln to drive the completely refreshed Navigator for 2022. You can see it got revised styling on the outside. It got a revised interior with new themes, a larger 13.2 inch display. And this is the first Lincoln vehicle ever to get the company's Active Glide, which is their hands-free driver assist technology. Now, of course, the big question I would answer with new competition in the form of the redesigned Escalade and the new Jeep Grand Wagoneer, has Lincoln made enough changes to the Navigator in order to keep this model competitive? Stay tuned to find out. Now, back in 2018, the Navigator was the first vehicle in the Lincoln lineup to get their latest design language, so it's only natural that they would want to do a refresh a few years later. Now, before we talk about the styling, I want to first remind you what's going on underneath the hood, because the Navigator used to only come with a V8 engine. Ford or Lincoln changed that a couple years ago when they introduced this 3.5-liter twin-turbo V6. For this new generation Navigator, it came out, of course, with the high-output version. This is the same engine that we get out of the Ford Raptor. However, this year, it makes about 10 less horsepower for a total of 440 and 510 pound feet pound feet of torque. The torque number stays the same. Lincoln says horsepower went down because the compression ratio was altered on this new engine. However, you should feel more power in terms of usability out on the road. We'll try that out, of course, when we get into the driving scene. All Navigators come with a 10-speed automatic transmission. That is a Ford and GM co-developed transmission. Uh, which is a great transmission for this vehicle. Rear-wheel drive is standard for $3,000. You can also add the company's full-time four-wheel drive system. This black label model that I'm showing you comes standard with four-wheel drive, which is great for an SUV like this. And Navigators, of course, have always been very capable. This vehicle will tow a maximum of 8,700 pounds, which is a few hundred pounds more versus the previous generation. And fuel economy, that's never really been a priority for the Navigator, but this four-wheel drive model here is rated at 16 in the city, 22 on the highway. Premium gas, of course, is gonna be required. It has a 24-gallon gas tank, so it's gonna be relatively expensive to fill up. However, I was hoping that Lincoln would put the PowerBoost hybrid uh, powertrain from the F-150 in this vehicle. They say they just didn't get enough demand from it from its customers, but I'm assuming that Lincoln is probably working on an all-electric version. That's completely unconfirmed right now, but for now, you only get an option of this, uh, v or this V6 twin turbo. As this vehicle uh, sits, it weighs in at just under 6,000 pounds, so it's certainly a pretty heavy car. Now, shutting the hood, Let's talk about the styling of this refreshed Navigator. Now, first of all, you probably are looking at this vehicle and thinking it doesn't really look all that different. And I wouldn't be uh, surprised if you felt that way because the styling changes here are so incredibly subtle. The first thing you're gonna notice, the big, large and in charge Lincoln grille here. This actually has been updated. It's a little bit larger this year. You can see this black label model now has, has its own unique finish to the grille with this kind of chrome area right here. If you guys don't like the chrome, you can get a black uh, appearance package for this vehicle. They call it a monochromatic package or a black label special edition package where it kind of blacks out this area. This chrome, however, still remains chrome, but it's now a black chrome. And then the headlights, you can see these are the same revised headlights that we get from the Lincoln Corsair and the Lincoln Aviator. Instead of that stacked LED look, uh, for the pre-refresh model, they've gone to just a single LED. You have these uh, LED daytime running lights, LED turn signals uh, down here, although I'm surprised it's not a sequential design. And then you can see down here, there's also LED fog lights, which look good. I think overall, the headlights definitely are an improvement. They look a little bit less busy versus the pre-refresh model, but let me know in the comment section below what you guys think of the design. It kind of brings it in line again with the rest of the family, like the Aviator and the Corsair. Now this particular one that I'm showing you is a new color option this year, uh, being a black label. You can only get this Manhattan green on the black label, uh, black label trim. And I actually love it. When the sun hits this color, it has this beautiful metallic sparkles in them. You can really see that it's a dark green. This is very reminiscent, of course, with what's going on with trends. A lot of people are liking these green cars. 
Size-wise, this vehicle hasn't changed because it's just a mid-cycle refresh. The Navigator is still offered in two different lengths. This is the standard version, uh, which has uh, a 122 and a half inch long wheelbase. Its overall length is 210 inches long. The L version is about a foot and a half longer than the standard mo wheelbase model, which again is going to give you more space in the third row and in the cargo area. Uh, the wheels on this model, you can see here, these are a 22 inch wheel that comes with the black label model. They kind of have this like machine finish with the black inner pockets. You can also get a black wheel entirely if you guys want to get that special edition package, which looks good. This is riding on 285-45 R22 inch tires. A 20 inch wheel is going to be the standard uh, tire option. All Navigators have roughly 9.6 inches of ground clearance, which is actually pretty high. However, if you guys are looking for an air suspension, the Navigator does not offer an air suspension. That's surprising to me because you can get that on the Escalade and on the Jeep Grand Wagoneer. What you do get, however, is an adaptive variable suspension with road preview. The road preview is a new feature this year, which we'll talk about later on in the driving seat. Now you can see chrome here on the mirrors, um, which you can black out if you guys go for that black package. You can also get black out the window trim and black out the uh, roof rails at the top if you'd like. And then you can see the black label model comes with the power deploying running boards, which is gonna be great for those of you who need help getting into this vehicle. I'm also surprised to see this vehicle has standard door handles that open up the traditional way. The new Aviator has the kind of digital uh, style door handle with the latch where you just push a button. I'm surprised that Lincoln didn't add that for the refresh Navigator, which I'm imagining they'll probably save for whenever they redesign this car. Now looking at the back, you can really see the sun's coming out finally and the beautiful green color really sparkles here in the sunlight and the revised taillights are a huge improvement over the previous generation. You can see Lincoln made them a little bit skinnier just like the front headlights. It's still a full length LED tail light which connects the two modules together. You have an LED turn signal, LED reverse lights. There's also a chrome bar here that I would love to see Lincoln black out um, when they have that black appearance package. Down here you can see uh, this one model here also has the tow package. Just a single exhaust here with two twin pipes. I'm surprised they actually don't do a dual exhaust with like a chrome finisher. It would really make this vehicle look a little bit sporty although that's not necessarily needed. This rear glass still opens up separately. If you want to push a button here you can see it opens up where you can kind of reach in and grab stuff here if you don't want to open up the whole tailgate. And then over here on the other side, there's a button here to activate the power tailgate, which is still full activated. And then this model here being the shorter wheelbase version offers just under 20 cubic feet of space with the third row seats up. So if you want to seat up to eight people, it has roughly 20 cubic feet. This is a pretty good amount. If you fold down the third row seat here, which is done with this little button, uh, which is pretty easy to do, just push that button here. You can see uh, it'll actually electrically fold down. The head restraints also fold down. This expands it to about 57 and a half cubic feet of space. 57 and a half is about 20 more cubic feet from versus what you'll find in something like a Ford Edge or a you know Ford Escape, a compact SUV. If you fold down everything, Lincoln says you get around 103 cubic feet of space. 103 cubic feet of space is a lot. Keep in mind, if you guys go for the L model, that'll actually increase it to 120 cubic feet of space, and you'll have roughly 32 cubic feet of space with the third row seat up. So if you need to have maximum cargo and, and I'll allow up to seating up to eight, I highly recommend going for the L for its additional cargo room. So obviously on the outside, Lincoln didn't make too many changes, but the interior of this vehicle also got pretty minor adjustments. However, there is a couple of there are a couple of big changes in this interior and it revolves around this massive screen, which I'll get to in just a moment because I do want to talk about the fact that this interior that I'm showing you is a new theme that's called Central Park. And that may not mean a lot to you. Lincoln says it's kind of like finding a cool and collective area in the urban jungle. Uh, and basically what it means is you get an urban green interior. That's right. This car is green on the outside and green on the inside. It's like a dark green, which looks fantastic. And you have this really beautiful wood, this burl walnut, which has a matte finish. And you can see it actually has a, uh, an etch uh, map of Central Park right here. And you'll also find it on the dashboard. It looks gorgeous. And because this is the black label model, it has additional wood everywhere. Now, let me first shut the door, talk about the door slam because it does sound nice and solid. However, a lot of the competitors like the Escalade, like the Jeep Grand Wagoneer offers soft closing doors. Um, and I'm surprised that Lincoln doesn't offer the soft closed door feature. Again, it's because they don't offer that digital latch that they have in the Aviator. Now, getting inside the vehicle, you can also get in this vehicle and use your phone as a key. It has that feature now, but if you don't want to use that, you can see there's still a traditional key fob here uh, with the Lincoln logo. It's very similar to all the other Ford products. It has a little bit shinier chrome. There's a door or a remote start here on the fob and you want to start the vehicle up. It has the new Lincoln symphonic chime. So as I turn it on, you can hear this is a slightly different chime versus the pre-refresh model. The button to fire up the engine is right here where you'd expect it to be. It's also not blocked by the steering wheel, which I actually do like a lot. 
And then when you turn the vehicle on, you can see it's got power adjusting seats. These are the 30 way perfect position seats, which the seats themselves, uh, this was the first Lincoln vehicle to get the 30 way perfect position seats. You can literally adjust it so many ways that it takes you a few minutes if you guys are first getting into this vehicle to kind of set everything. But then you can see once you've set everything here, you can use the three person memory on both sides and kind of set your seats. Um, so you don't have to actually think about it when you get into the car. The steering wheel itself also has a power tilt and telescoping function, which is paired again to the uh, memory function that you have for the front seats. Now, again, once I get inside here, you can see the interior doesn't look all that different, but the main difference you're gonna notice here is this touchscreen. It's now a 13.2 inch display. So it's about three inches larger versus the pre-refresh model, which had a 10 and a quarter inch display. You also have a 12.4 inch fully digital display here, which Lincoln says they updated the graphics primarily because this is now running on Sync 4, which means it includes wireless uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and over the air wireless updates, which is a great addition. The preview, the preview refreshed model was starting to look a little bit dated there. The rest of the interior you can see being that this is the black label model, you have real leather along the dash, along the upper part of the dash, real wood, piano black plastic, real metal trim. It all looks really expensive. The door panel also has beautiful real leather stitching everywhere. You can see it's stitching on the top and on the bottom portion. Down on the lower end, it's even soft touch plastic, although it's not full leather stitching. You might find that in some competitors. And then you can see my tester being the black label has the 28 speaker Revel Ultima audio system. With the audio system itself, sounds incredible. It's a full immersive audio system and it's pretty much on par with all the systems that you're going to find from a lot of its competing uh, German and American rivals. The headliner even has this beautiful, um, nice mouse fur like material where it feels like ultra suede. You have leather accents on the grab handles and the one over here on the other side actually has leather accents. There's actually four speakers on the ceiling of this vehicle. So again, it gives you that full on luxury feel that you kind of demand in this segment. Now, looking at the rest of the steering wheel here, I want to talk about what some of the changes they've made. It's pretty much the same steering wheel. However, you'll notice there's this new kind of eyebrow display here. This is for the active glide system. This is the same system that I've seen in the Mustang Mach-E. And of course the F-150 uh, is gonna get this as well, the Lightning. And then you can see here, this 12 inch digital display has been updated uh, this year. The graphics have changed and you can also customize the screen a little bit more. You can see if I touch this right here, you can cycle to between what this shows uh, there's even like a calm screen that'll kind of get rid of everything. If I change the drive mode here, it shows you a, uh, all your different drive modes. There's a Excite, Conserve, Normal, uh, Normal 4x4 Auto, Slippery, and then the deep conditions where you're in heavy snow and whatnot. This definitely has gotten faster and it looks a lot cleaner. You still can't put um, features like your map display over here, like you might be able to find in some of its competitors but it does look a lot nicer. I do want to show you guys, there's the Apple CarPlay. Uh, when you have it pulled up, it, it has that widescreen view, although I wish that Lincoln would allow you to take up the entire screen. This is pretty similar to what I've tested in the new Ford Bronco and the Ford Expedition, and it just works a lot better. It looks a lot cleaner. When I put the vehicle into reverse, you can see the reverse 360 camera, which the 360 camera is standard. Uh, this car also has the active park assist. The graphics have just gotten so much better. In the preview for screen, it wouldn't even take up the entire screen. So this is now world-class. It's pretty much on par with its competitors. I do want to mention, however, that the Lincoln's infotainment display isn't quite as uh, extravagant as what you'll find in the Escalade, where you'll have like a 38 inch curved display. The Jeep Grand Wagoneer has like up to 75 inches of screen because you have a passenger screen. This is a lot more traditional, but it still looks impressive. So I have to give Lincoln credit there for not going a little over the top like some of its competitors. Now over here, you can see there's your gear selector for the 10 speed auto. It's got, it's got that piano key style uh, toggle where you push down on it. You have more piano black plastic here. You have heated and cooled seats, uh, which is nice. The wood here looks fantastic. You have a wireless phone charging pad over here with a USB-A and a USB-C dongle. Your drive mode selector is over here along with your electronic parking brake. When I open this up, you can see the center console area is very deep and large. It has a traditional 12 volt power outlet in there. I do wish that Lincoln would adjust the design of this to where I didn't have to actually open up the entire um, lid if I wanna access this. For example, if a passenger has their elbow here, you have to actually ask them to move. It's kind of like a small nitpick there, uh, but it is something that its competitors uh, of the Navigator have thought about. I'm also surprised to see the rear view mirror here is a really nice frameless design, but it doesn't offer a digital rear view mirror. That's something again that I can see in some of its competitors. You, have, you do have a nice heads up display over here, which you can't get in something like the Ford Expedition. 
So again, Lincoln is playing it a little bit safer here with some of the tech features. The glove compartment over here, you can see, is a bin style. It's damped and it's lined with felt. It's a relatively good size. Um, you have more storage underneath the floating center console here. And then above me, massive panoramic glass roof that really lets in a lot of light. This is actually going to be standard on the black label, optional on other trims. So overall, the cabin didn't really need too many changes, but Lincoln, what they did here is gave us better screens. They gave us the active drive system or active glide system, and they gave us a better looking display for the instrument panel. Now, because the Navigator is the company's flagship vehicle, it's the largest SUV they make, it's going to be used as a family vehicle a lot of times. So I want to show you guys what the second and the third row is like. First of all, this interior, you can really see in the light that it's green. This is the Central Park theme. There's also a new invitation theme, which kind of has a really dark brown leather theme. I love this green interior. It looks good. I also want to point out the fact that this model here has captain's chairs, which means it seats seven, and you have this massive center console here. Uh, which is fixed. If you guys don't want this, Lincoln will sell you a model without it where you'll have just a fold down armrest. It'll maintain the pass through to get into the third row. But let me get back here and show you guys the space because it's just absolutely ridiculous. But uh, Lincoln says legroom back here can be as much as 42 inches. Uh, 42 inches because you can slide the seat forward and back. You can see with it all the way back, there's just a ton of legroom back here for somebody my height. It's pretty much the same legroom as the front. The seats themselves back here also are very comfortable and supportive. They're not the same 30-way perfect position seats, obviously, but what Lincoln did do this year is they made heated and ventilated second row seats as standard across the board. And my tester for an extra $625 also includes massaging second row seats. That's right, you can now use a massage function in the second row seat here. You can see it's pretty similar to the front. There's a 5.8 inch screen here that shows you exactly what type of massage uh, option you want. You can also control the left and the right massage, and you can also access the heated seats back here and the ventilated seats. This is all really nice. This is a segment first uh, feature to get uh, second row massaging seats. So Cadillac and Jeep definitely are gonna have to add that feature because this is a feature that I think a lot of uh, consumers are gonna like. The rest of this interior you can see is pretty nice. You have this massive center console with more of that uh, etched wood with Central Park map right there. You can see cup holders galore. You have a big center console over here that opens up. There's even a light in there. And then you also have uh, USB options, of course. You're gonna have a USB uh, power outlet over here. You have two USB ports and then a regular 12 volt power outlet, which you expect. There's also a way where you can close the uh, sunshade above me, uh, which is nice. Although the one thing I'm surprised, you have a nice sunshade here that'll close, but there's no manual sunshades on the doors. I actually think that for the money, Lincoln should have added that because it would have, again, created a little bit more privacy. There are two map storage pockets over here, which again is going to be nice. And if you open this up, you can see more cup holders here. So you have cup holders over here and two cup holders over here, and then more door cup holders here. The door panel also has beautiful stitched leather on the black label model, which again adds to the luxury factor, factor of this interior. Now, I wanna show you guys the third row. To get back into the third row, I have to get out because this console is taking up space. And uh, my editor, Rob, already flipped it forward, but you can see, just flip this forward here. It's kind of spring actuated, but once you push it forward, get back here. And the Navigator was one of the first vehicles in the segment to introduce a third row that was actually usable for adults because of that independent rear suspension. Um, the floor is nice and low. There's actually 36 inches of legroom back here, which is about the same from what you're gonna find in like a compact vehicle like a Honda Civic. You can see at five foot seven, I can easily get comfortable back here. There's even a nice, you know, low floor. So my knees aren't in my face. Uh, there's some beautiful soft materials back here uh, with the um, suede like material for the headliner. This is all hard touch plastic, but you can see, look, there's even a power recline function here on the third row because this is a power folding third row. And because the vehicle is so wide, you can actually fit three people across. So again, the Navigator was one of the first vehicles to be introducing a usable third row, but just keep in mind the Jeep Grand Wagoneer and the new Cadillac Escalade have third rows that are much more usable because those vehicles have also switched to an independent rear suspension. All right, so we are here in the brand new or refreshed 2022 Navigator, and we actually haven't had a chance to drive this generation for almost two years. Um, the last time we drove one, we had it back in our local area, and it was the pre-refreshed model. And while Lincoln didn't make any changes to the vehicle in terms of the powertrain, the transmission's the same, we did lose about 10 horsepower now. So now that I've got my zero to 60 equipment, I'm gonna actually just do a quick zero to 60 test. Remember, this is still like a 5,000 pound SUV or 6,000 pound SUV. So let's go ahead and see what this thing can do. Uh, it's in sport mode, which they call like sight.
0 to 60 in 5.55 seconds. That's actually faster than what I was expecting. Uh, and it's a little bit faster than what I tested in the Ford Raptor, the new one, uh, a couple months ago, or actually a couple weeks ago, actually, Rob, when we were driving the, the orange one. Uh, and actually, I'm pretty impressed with that time. This makes the Navigator one of the faster options. Now, I'll plan to retest this vehicle when we have it back in our home area. Um, but he, we're here in Phoenix, Arizona. And I don't think we're at elevation here, um, which which honestly would make the vehicle slower, but 5.55 seconds is plenty fast. Uh, so Lincoln didn't necessarily need to make any changes to the powertrain, even though we did technically lose 10 horsepower, which kind of sucks, but we still have the same 510 pound feet of torque, which is plentiful. Uh, we have this 10 speed automatic, which is smooth, responsive, uh, and everything else about this car is pretty much the same. Uh, the vehicle is still lacking an adjustable air suspension, but uh, in terms of the handling, dynamics. Um, the Navigator is still a big SUV that's built off of a truck frame. So if I start turning the wheel like this, you can see there's a lot of play, which is kind of the same way how it is for all the other competitors. I'm talking about the Escalade and the Jeep Grand Wagoneer. Um, but the Navigator was one of the first vehicles to introduce an independent rear suspension. And that's still you know, very much the case. It has an independent rear suspension with the adaptive dampers. With now it has road preview where it uses the cameras in the front to kind of scan the road and prepare the suspension to absorb a pothole or a bump, whatever, which we've seen that technology before. Technically, Ford introduced it on a Fusion almost 10 years ago. But just driving down the road here, we're going to be doing a couple of different driving scenes in the Navigator. Uh, the big news, of course, for 2022 is the fact that this now has the Active Glide, which is their version of Blue Cruise. I'll test that out later on a road where um, it actually does work uh, because remember, it has to use LiDAR mapping and Ford says, or Lincoln says, it'll work on 130,000 uh, miles of interstates across North America. But uh, just driving it down the road here, I'm kind of getting a massage, which is nice. The quietness of this vehicle is something that I want to talk about because Lincoln, of course, is known for their quiet flight. Um, and they stress that they made this vehicle you know, even quieter uh, for this refresh model. So now we're driving the Navigator on a road where the Blue Cruise is able to find it in its database, which means I can officially take my hands off the wheel. And this vehicle should function a lot like Cadillac Super Cruise. Now I have the same system in my Mach-E GT Performance, and this is essentially the same system, although Lincoln calls it Active Glide, which to me doesn't sound like driver assistance. It sounds a little bit more inappropriate than that, but I'm not gonna say. Um, and I have to say it works very similarly to the Mach-E. There are instances where it shows me a blue steering wheel there. It shows the blue icon in the center that shows this kind of like force field around the car. And this is where you know that the it's safe to take your hands off the wheel. Now, the one thing about Blue Cruise, and it's the same thing about in my Mach-E, whenever it senses there's an area where it doesn't recognize in their database, it tells you to put your hands back on the wheel, which I don't love how it does that. Because for one, it doesn't actually give you an audible chime or anything. It just shows you there in the screen to keep your hands back on the wheel. And then if I ignore it, it starts to beep. Uh, and basically I have to wiggle the wheel and let the system know. It also has all these sensors here that watches my face to make sure that I am paying attention. So if I close my eyes or I look away, it's going to know that. And that's essentially what GM does with their Super Cruise system. And I have to say, when it's going down the road here, it does a pretty good job of staying centered in the lane. But kind of like when I tried out Toyota's teammate system or Lexus's teammate system, I don't like how this vehicle is constantly telling me because literally that like five seconds went by and it's telling me again, keep my hands back on the wheel. And then it starts beeping. And then if I ignore it, it'll completely shut off. So it, it needs a little work, but I'm guessing that Ford's just being conservative as they slowly roll this out. Remember, this is the first Lincoln vehicle to get the Active Glide system. So uh, it is nice that it finally has that. And it needed it because you know you can get a Cadillac Escalade with Super Cruise and the Jeep Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer will be offering their version of like uh, an ad adaptive cruise control system uh, where it's hands-free. But let's turn the system off. Let's switch back into, or let's go to normal mode here, uh, which I'm surprised this car doesn't actually offer a comfort mode. I guess it's because it doesn't have a comfort suspension or an air suspension, but just kind of gliding down the road here, this is what the Navigator was built for. It's really quiet in here. Uh, the ride quality is also pretty smooth, um, even though this road's not the smoothest, but and we've got these 22 inch wheels, it's got a really good ride quality. It's got great visibility. Uh, the seats also take a long ass time to get the right position because there's 30 different ways. But once you find that perfect position, uh, it's a really comfortable seat. The massage function Lincoln has updated this year. They also added massaging seats in the second row, which works well. It works pretty much as well as the systems that I've tried in a lot of German luxury brands. 
um, and it works better than the uh, what Genesis has in a lot of their luxury cars. And then I also like the new tech in this car. Now the Lincoln doesn't have like the really amazing like 38 inch curved screen or the 75 inches of total screens you find in the Jeep, but you know you've got a 12 inch display here and a 13 inch display here. It all works really well, and I think that. Uh, for, for those buyers who get overwhelmed by too many screens, this is going to be kind of like a nice middle ground between um, just the overwhelming screens you'll find in its competitors. All right. Let's try another zero to 60 real quick. Okay. Really smooth, effortless power. And this time we got 5.82 seconds. This is actually going slightly uphill. Uh, versus earlier, I believe we were going slightly downhill. So pretty good numbers. And it's actually, I'm surprised that this vehicle is faster than the Raptor. Um, however, the Raptor also has big 35 inch tall tires. That's gonna slow it down. Uh, but remember, we're still piloting a near 6,000 pound beast. I also like the sound of this engine. It put my foot down here, you can hear. It has kind of a synthesized growl and it doesn't obviously replace a V8 that you were gonna hear in the Escalade or the Grand Wagoneer. That has a nice sounding engine, probably the best sound in the segment, but you feel the additional torque. This definitely is fast. It's actually a smidge slower than the Grand Wagoneer because I believe we got 5.2 seconds in that car, which was just crazy. However, it's such a gas guzzler that you're paying for that. The Escalade is going to be right around this speed. So you don't technically buy this car for drag racing, but the Navigator should get the best gas mileage out of the two. It's rated at 1622. The trip computer has been saying we've been averaging 16, uh, which I'll have to do a re uh, retest for the fuel economy when we have this car for a week where we can actually put it through a fuel economy test versus this sh um, you know, shorter media drive. But other than that, it's still a really nice driving car. I think that Lincoln made enough updates to it to keep it competitive. I mean, obviously the screens need to be updated. I like the, the Active Glide Blue Cruise system, the seats also, the massaging function, the luxury in this car. I love the interior uh, with this um, Central Park theme with this kind of urban green leather interior with the green exterior. It's a great combination and it certainly makes this car continue to stand out. Would I choose it over an Escalade or a Grand Wagoneer? I'm not entirely sure. I, I was hoping that Lincoln would offer their Power Boost uh, hybrid engine that you find in the F-150, but they just told me that customers weren't asking for that option. Although I feel like Lincoln is probably working on an all electric version of the Navigator. They may just skip an, a hybrid version entirely and just go full electric. But other than that, the new technology, the comfortable driving position, the commanding view of the road, the uh, great acceleration, and probably better gas miles than its V8 competitors. Uh, it makes the Navigator certainly still appealing, and I think that uh, it should continue to do well uh, when this vehicle goes on sale in a month or so. So I was able to chat with a Lincoln engineer, and he was able to confirm that earlier when I was trying the Active Glide, it was technically the Active Glide hands-on, which I don't know about you guys, sounds kind of sexual. <laughs> now, we are on a stretch of road here that is supposedly a, supposedly a hands-free uh, part of the road where the system has mapped the road. Of course, Rob, did you choke on your water? Are you okay? <laughs> Cause yes, it sounded a little bit dirty, but anyways, let's get back to the car because I want to show you guys what the active glide system war looks like when it's actually functioning properly. So I just hit the button here. It's showing me that the adaptive cruise is on and now it's showing hands-free. Okay. So the system here actually turns or the screen here goes completely blue. And it's still saying watch the, the road because uh, my hand was blocking the actual sensor here. But let's go ahead and increase the speed here. So this should function just like Cadillac Super Cruise. And there's a big icon there that says hands free. It also shows the steering wheel and the heads up display to let you know that you can go hands free. Let's go ahead and increase the speed here. So ooh, like this should basically allow the car to completely drive. Oh, and this Sienna totally cut me off. And this is one of the problems with these self-driving technologies or hands free driving technologies. Ooh, okay. Oh, oh. <laughs> good thing that was good thing it was just a uh like a towel or something <laughs> anyways as you can see it's telling me again watch the road why are you telling me to watch the road hello it doesn't say anything about the steering wheel it's just saying watch the road so now the system's telling me to resume control obviously it didn't like something that happened earlier like we ran over a towel <laughs> So let's go ahead and try this again, because I do want to show you guys how the active drive works. I want to test it out to see if it's as good as Cadillac's Super Cruise. 
So right now it's still not hands-free because it hasn't told me it's hands-free. Remember, the system uses LiDAR, now it says hands-free, uh, to determine if it actually can allow you to go hands-free. So again, now this is where I can take my hands off the wheel. It requires me to keep watching the road, obviously, because there can be idiots that cut you off at last minute, or there could be a towel in the road that you might run over. Um, but yes, yeah, so this uses the lane centering to basically keep the vehicle centered in the lane. Uh, and it also will follow curves on the road, just like Cadillac Super Cruise. And then of course, Jeep is coming out with their version of this. And I didn't really love the system in my Mach-E. This is very much similar to Blue Cruise, just it's been tuned a little bit more for Lincoln's quiet flight technology or their quiet flight driving theme. Um, and obviously here on the interstate, very comfortable, quiet car to drive. Uh, and I can't say that, okay, now it's telling me to put my hands back on the wheel. And this is just like my Mach-E when, when it does this, because if the system determines that it doesn't know the road well enough, it doesn't have it in its database, it's gonna tell you to put your hands back on the wheel. So it's constantly going back and forth between um, hands-free and hands back on. And you can see in, this, in the instrument panel, it shows like hands back on the wheel. And that's the one thing about the Ford system that I think needs a little bit of work. Now it's gone back to hands-free because you constantly have to be alert and it doesn't allow you to really stay hands-free for as long as what I've tried in GM's Super Cruise system. Uh, and I also noticed when it's using the lane centering, it for the most part stays in the center, but then there'll be times where I'll pass by a really big semi truck on the right side or the left side. Hazard reported ahead. Uh, and the system will try to keep me centered in the lane, but like there are instances where that truck might you know, veer a little bit closer to you and you want to kind of hug the left a little bit. It doesn't recognize that truck. And that's kind of something that I think that they'll fix with over there updates. But the fact that at least the Navigator has the Active Glide, which they really need to rethink the name of this system, uh, does bring this up to the same level as its competitors. Uh, but unlike the Cadillac, which offers the auto lane change function, if I try to signal right here, this will not automatically change lanes for me. Uh, and that's something that I do think Lincoln should consider offering. And they may eventually do that with an over the air update. update. So about five years ago, when Lincoln introduced the all new fourth generation Navigator, they very much set a new standard in sight. Because remember, back then, we didn't have the fully redesigned Escalade. In fact, the old model was due for replacement. And the Jeep Grand Wagoneer and Wagoneer just didn't exist yet. So after spending the day driving the completely refreshed 2022 Navigator, how does this vehicle stack up against its competitors? And I have to say, Lincoln made some nice changes here. The interior is really where they raised the bar up. It's not obviously class leading because the screens aren't as important as its competitors, but it does have a much larger uh, touch screen. It has better in graphics in the center display. And this model here that I've switched over to is the black label with the special edition black package, which you can see includes the black 20 inch wheels, the black roof, the black menu mirrors. I would definitely go for something like this because it's something that looks a little bit more trendy and modern in my eyes with the black and white as a color combination. However, that Manhattan green that I showed you earlier also was an excellent color choice. And really, where Lincoln could have made the Navigator better, I really would have liked to see them add an air suspension, although the ride quality of this model is still pretty good. And then I also would have liked to see them uh, include things like soft closing doors with the digital latch system. I'm surprised that Lincoln didn't include that. It would have been an, a simple addition to me uh, in terms of just taking it from the aviator. And then the powertrain, this 3.5 liter twin turbo V6, 3060 in the mid five second range is very good. And while Lincoln could have added the power boost hybrid option, I think that's something that they may consider doing in the future or just do a full on electric model. They have to go by what their customer demands. And really what this car gives you is all the capability and performance performance and luxury that you expect from a Lincoln vehicle. The interior is just dead silent. It's really gorgeously appointed. It also looks fantastic. And I think Lincoln has made enough changes to this model to make it competitive. Now, would I personally buy this vehicle over the Cadillac Escalade or the Jeep Grand Wagoneer? I'd probably choose it over the Jeep, but the new Escalade is very impressive. So until I get the two vehicles side by side to do a full on comparison test, I'm not going to be able to answer that question on whether uh, the Lincoln or the Cadillac is the, the better option. But with all that said, I, got, I guess you guys are probably wondering, what's it going to cost to buy this vehicle if you're looking to buy one? Well, they're heading to dealerships next month, and they start at $76,700 for the base uh, Navigator version. That's actually about 10 grand less versus the Jeep Grand Wagoneer. However, it is about the same price as the Cadillac Escalade. Now, of course, if you guys want to step up to the reserve trip, those are going to be starting at around $87,000, add another three year $3,000 if you guys want the longer wheelbase L is like another $2,500 extra. Now, of course, my tester here 
being the black label model is very expensive, a lot more expensive than the base price. It starts at $102,000. My tester with the black appearance package for an extra $7,000, the chalet interior uh, upgrade package, the rear seat entertainment for another $2,000. This one in is stickers for around $115,000. So $115,000 makes this car pretty expensive. It's a little more expensive versus when the Navigator first came out about five years ago. It's right in line with its competitors like the Cadillac Escalade and the, the Jeep Grand Wagoneer. So if you have that money to spend, you need to be able to haul seven or eight people, tow a heavy load and carry all their crap. This is still one of the best choices out there. Just keep in mind, it isn't the most flashy option, but it is a very well-proportioned and just easy to live with luxury SUV that has kind of an elegance that really Lincoln started when they first delivered this vehicle. Four years ago. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the completely refreshed 2022 Lincoln Navigator. So if you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook. And as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.